Hello, good day and welcome back to Go On The Run. And today, I want to introduce you to something new. And that is a Kubernetes resource called a pod. So what is a resource? Well, in Kubernetes, there are many, many resources and we are going to be learning about a few of them. And as we need them, we'll discuss them. Just like now I'm introducing pods because we have our Kubernetes cluster up and running. And this is sort of the first thing I would like to show you that is most like something we are already using. So let's jump in. Now, I want to say that in the interest of trying to release videos more frequently, I'm going to try and keep these videos to about 10 to 15 minutes. <laughs> Sometimes I'll run over that. Um, but I'll do that and also I'll do minimal editing. I think people are going to appreciate seeing more videos than worry about me making typing mistakes or saying something silly that I have to record multiple times. So let's do it. Let's just say there are many types of resources in Kubernetes and a pod is just one of them. It is the first one we're going to see today. And so let's say this is my Kubernetes cluster and we want to create a container and that container, let's say, is going to run Redis. Now remember, Kubernetes allows you to manage containers. So these containers are the same containers that we've been creating and running in Docker. Docker. Um, there are other type of container management environments, so um, it gets pretty complicated, but Kubernetes is one of the most popular. In terms of containers themselves, you can describe containers using Docker way of describing, but there are also other way like um, of describing like Rocket, um, is another one and then there are some other ones just note how a container is just like we described the encapsulation of how you can run a process and manage it okay and we have been running that in docker now we want to step it up a little bit and see we're going to use kubernetes because we want to see what kind of benefit kubernetes could give you that docker doesn't give you so we're still going to be able to run a container in kubernetes but here's the thing kubernetes manages containers using something called a pod. And this is why this is the first thing that we're going to see in Kubernetes is the pod, because that's like the basic thing that we need to be able to create a container. When we create a container, this is always being managed by something called a pod. And so just like in, with Docker, how you can create multiple containers, well, we can create multiple pods. And if we create another pod within Kubernetes, we can still have um, the same type of container in terms of, you know, remember container is created from an image, right? So we have the Redis image and we use that to create a container. So we could have a different pod. Of course, it will have a different name that run in another Redis container. Okay. And these pods are isolated from each other. Just like how the containers themselves isolate, isolate the processes. Same thing that's happening at another level with the pod. And you'll see why in a minute. Like I said just now, a container isolates a process, the Redis process, right? The service. And we do have isolation at the container level. Well, when we wanted multiple containers to communicate with each other, what did we have to do? Well, we had to create a network within Docker to say, hey, I want these containers that are isolated. The processes are isolated. I want them to be able to communicate. And we saw how to do that with a Docker Compose file. Well, with Kubernetes, if we have a pod, we can put multiple containers in. And if those containers are within the same pod, they can communicate with each other. So we sort of get this idea of being able to have a set of containers that we want to communicate to, with each other get them to be managed as a single unit and a single entity with this idea of a pod. And we'll see later on why this is so powerful because you can do things like scaling up and down a pod, which is a set of containers that need to go together. If you have a situation where two containers and they're tightly coupled, tightly coupled, okay, and they need to be co-located and sort of one cannot exist without the other and they need each other, well, then you will put them in the same pod. So what is a pod? Pod is a Kubernetes resource, like we said. A pod isolates the management of one or more containers 
within a pod, the containers share a common network and can communicate with each other. Finally, we can use the kubectl run command to create a pod with one container. We'll see, we'll use this because we're going to see how to put multiple containers in a pod in part two. But for this very first part, to keep things simple, we'll just create pods with one container. So let's jump to the command line and practice a little bit. So I'm on my command line and my minikube should be running. I can verify it by minikube status. It should tell me that my minikube is up and running. Now, the only other thing I'd like you to do is to run the minikube dashboard. And the only reason I'm suggesting this is so that uh, you can get to see when resources, which resources are running in your Kubernetes cluster and when they're created. So my minikube dashboard is up. And you can see I, I don't have anything running in this default namespace. I'll open up a second um, terminal and I'm just going to zoom in to a, a bit because I don't really care about the dashboard running. Remember, you have to keep the dashboard running. I still have it running. The only thing is I sort of zoom in on the bottom because I, I don't want care to look at the top one. Um, just the dashboard that's running there. All right. So like I said, the first command is going to be kubectl run. So if you just type kubectl and just enter, you'll see there are a large number of, well, not large, there are a few commands and they're categorized, you know, deployment command, basic commands, and so on. And on the basic commands for beginners, <laughs> that's us, there's this run command, right? This create a resource from a file or standard input. Remember I said that oh, there are many types of resources in Kubernetes. And in part two, we'll see how to create resources, like a pod resource from a file. You can expose an application, you know, a resource like a controller, blah, blah, blah. Even a pod, you can expose it. We will see that later, probably in part three, maybe. Um, but there is this um, run command. And this sort of reminds me of the Docker run command, right? Because Docker run is run a particular image on the cluster. So let's just see how this works. So if we look at the bottom, it says kubectl command dash dash l. So that's going to be us, us too. And we tell type help. Now, at first glance, this is going to seem overwhelming. So let me clean up my screen and run this command again. And I will say, don't worry about all the text that's printed out. Just take a deep breath, calm your nerves, and then scroll back. And so we can see it says, create and run a particular image in a pod. That sounds like exactly what you want. But look at this. These nice examples, start an Nginx pod, for example. And a simple command is kubectl run. And this must be the pod name because the only thing that's given after is this argument that says minus minus image. And this is the image that you want to run. So I say, let's start off simple. That's the first and simplest command. Let's just run that command. So we'll go back here and we do kubectl nginx inx and minus minus image equals engine x and press enter and it says pod slash engine x created and if you look at the back here you saw my um, browser updated i didn't have to refresh or anything it says pending one and pod and now it turned green and so yep we have a pod running and that's because i'm um, here on the tab workloads by default I can, of course, go to just look at all my pods and just see this pod alone, but this is cool. So it tells me how long it's been up and running, and this looks very familiar to our Docker PS command, where we can see all the containers that are running. Now, you might say, well, bro, you told me at all um, this pod is really going to run a, an, um, one or more containers within it. And here you can see it says containers. But remember what I said, the kubectl command and uh, run command only run one container. And that's our engine x image container. And that's what it's running. This is the name of that container it tells you it's up. And we see all this information about a pod that's similar to what you would see for Docker PS. And if I click on my pod again, I can see up at the top, there's some actions that I can take. 
I can view the log and we can see, oh, this is the same exact thing as if you type docker logs command and then type the name of a container. I can go back now and I can, uh, it says ex exec into the pod, which means go into the pod and run commands within the container. If you remember, that's something we can do. And you can edit resources, which we'll look at in the next video. And you can also delete this resource, right? You can delete it. So if we do that, it tells us that it's going to be gone. And if I go back here, we'll see, yep, it's gone. So that's how easy it is to run a container. Let me clean up my screen again, and I'm going to run the uh, help command again. And we will see there's some other ways you can run a pod or create an image within a pod. And these are the things that we care about, like environmental variable. Oh, before that, I skipped. You can say, which port do you want to expose on this container? Because if you have a container running within a pod, maybe you could run multiple containers. So within that pod, those containers might need to communicate with each other. And so if you we imagine that we're going to have a Redis container within a pod and our service container within the same pod, we'll need the Redis container to expose or export the poles, the port uh, that you know our server needs. So we can sort of run this command. Again, we'll pretend that oh, we're running our stack. So let's call it our stack. Let's say my stack. That's the name of our pod. And the image we want to run is Redis, because we want a Redis server container within that pod. And we want the port, I think it's 63, 97, or whatever that is. We can figure it out, 79, OK? And that is all we need to do. And there we go. If we wait, we should see that our um, my stack, stack pod is up. And if I click on it and scroll down, we'll see that there's an image running with this called Redis. OK? And of course, we're just exposing that one port within our thing. This is not exposing our, com our computer local host. We cannot, still cannot connect to it. That's going to be much later. This is just within the pod that we can do this. Now, you saw me delete this res um, a pod by clicking this delete resource button here once you're inside the uh, thing. You saw me look at the logs from within um, this dashboard. But you can also do some of these same things by saying, you know, kubectl delete. And if you do type delete and you press enter, it's going to ask you what it is that you want to delete. And you can specify the resource and the name. So for example, I can say I want to delete a pod. And well, which pod do I want to delete? Well, I have command completion enabled for my um, ZSA shell, but it doesn't matter if you have bash or whatever shell you're using. You can have you know, command completion for the kubectl command. And so when I press tab, it shows me that I have a pod called my stack. If I had multiple um, pods running, it would just list them, give me all of them, and I have to pick. So if I run this command, you can see it says delete pod my stack deleted, and pretty soon you should see it disappear, and it didn't. So let's clean up again. And so I'll rerun, because it's so easy to run this, I'll rerun this pod, I'll rerun, I'll create another pod, um, the engine next one. And so we can see if we jump back over here, we should see it. Oh, we have two pods coming up, and they're up. And look how fast they're up and they're running. So these are two different pods. Within each pod, I have different containers. Of course, I can run, like I said before in the presentation, I can run another Nginx pod. Let's just call this Nginx2, call it Nginx you know, 3, for example. And there we go. We have multiple pods running. And um, each one of those pods have their, is managing whatever containers are within those pods. Right now, you, we're not seeing those containers. In order to see the containers, we actually have to go to the pods themselves to see which containers are in them. And again, we only created one container within our pod. Okay, now there are a couple other things I want to show you. One, if you go to the Kubernetes website, which is kubernetes.io,
and you can go to documentation and if you scroll down a little bit here on the lookup reference information you can see command line tool kubectl and if you click on that and then over on the side if you click um, kubectl commands right because there are all these sub commands for kubectl you'll come to this page and this page is pretty cool because look at this here's our run command these are all the other commands that kubectl exposes but here's that documentation describing all the the split it out to tell you what the command is a description they show you the general usage and then these are all the arguments the description for all the arguments in the middle of the page but then look on the side you have examples and it's those same examples that we saw in the command line that look really confusing so i think this is really nice that the kubectl command kubernetes command is just so helpful and it gives you those examples and even though it spits out a lot of information and look kind of scary you know it's really just there to help you and so you have two ways of doing this you can use the web browser if you think that's easier for you to digest and doesn't scare you as much because then you can see the examples and then if you want some more details on the exact argument you can do that all right so i think with that this is a really good place to end it a little bit more than 15 minutes i think by now it's pushing that boundary but let's end it here um if you're here and you're not subscribed please consider subscribing if you like the material um, for those who subscribe already and you're returning thank you for coming back and sticking with the my channel um i really appreciate it um if you like what you saw in this video give a thumbs up if you have comment you know anything that can improve let me know if it's anything you'd like to see of course if your comment is just hey this is a good you know you're doing well i like to see that too definitely the interaction is what i'm asking for on the video so that the child can get um bump up in, when people search for stuff on kubernetes and so on so i don't necessarily mean that all your comments has to be good or bad uh, i'm just respectful but definitely i'd like to see some comments if you like what you're seeing it's feedback so give me some feedback um, either way and that's it um, take care stay safe and see you in the next video very soon bye bye